Hi everyone, this is Dan and this is Sojourn uh, from the Ashes. I think this is basically uh, the volume one for this uh, series. And uh, this particular uh, comic is uh, basically a... Uh, I, I saw it on a Razor Fist video and I felt uh, kind of sounded pretty cool uh, when he described it. So I was like, oh, I'm going to check this out and see what it's like. Uh, and it's pretty good, I'm not going to lie. Uh, anyhow, this is, uh, an interesting format. This is technically, uh, by the way, did not buy it for this price. This price is crazy. Uh, I think I got it for, like, I think a little under the sticker price online. I'll put a link down below for those of you interested in this, uh, this graphic novel. And I say it's a graphic novel because the way the chapters are separated, the chapters feel like actual comic book issues. And what I mean is, let me go into one right here. Do, 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 do. Uh, so this right, this is like chapter one. This looks like a cover. Like this literally looks like a cover. You could have Sojourn on the top, etc. Cross-gen comics, whatever. Then you open up to a splash page and then you're introducing characters and stuff, right? Uh, and all of the chapters are like that. So it makes me wonder whether it was actually a graphic novel or if it was like a collection of issues. Like I don't really know if this is a graphic novel or a trade paperback, because it the way it's written, it feels like a trade paperback, but uh, according to this, it, it it's a graphic novel. So, all right, anyhow, the whole point is, uh, <laughs> uh, Sojourn is basically a fantasy uh, comic, and uh, you get a really nice introduction to the world in the first prelude chapter. You get this kind of thing. I'm not a huge fan of these, by the way, uh, just because uh, I, I've always felt like this is uh, kind of cheeseballish uh, when they do this. I'd actually rather have narration boxes. I know people don't like narration boxes anymore, but those are that's my preference. But it's fine. You get to know, oh, the world is called Quinn. Uh, World Lord Mordath, this douchebag right here, uh, is a big problem. And uh, uh, you get this nice little... By the way, the art by Greg Land is is fantastic. Really, really nice. Uh, he's torturing this dude, trying to figure out who this guy is. And then we get this situation. Uh, this guy who's sort of been this dark lord that's uh, really been a menace to the world... Uh, his empire is crumbling, and he's getting his ass whipped, and he's losing this war. And he's losing this war because of... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me jump ahead right here. Uh, this dude right here, Aiden. Uh, this is Mordath. This is Aiden, by the way. And Aiden has sort of united the five lands of Quinn and, uh, and, and, ru and rallied them to defeat Mordath's uh, rule. And uh, Aiden basically smokes Mordath with an arrow... Uh, kills him and ends his, his life and his reign. And then uh, you get a little bit of lore building. Uh, very interesting. He doesn't want to be the king, even though the people here want him to be the king after defeating Mordath. Uh, he breaks up the arrow into like five pieces and sends it to the five lands, uh, creating sort of like your typical European kind of uh, mystical uh, uh, fantasy type of thing. Like, you can see how, oh, I have five pieces spread across the lands. is like, okay, you're kind of developing, uh, you know, the the sort of uh, MacGuffins to get your quest going. Uh, which isn't bad. It's just sort of like, eh, you know, it's like I, it's like when you already know what something's going to happen, you're kind of like, eh, I'm not, I'm not feeling that too much. But it's not bad. It, it's, it, it, it does its job in the beginning, which is getting you into this fantasy world. And uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then what's really cool right here is you get this little dark intrigue right here where they go into the tome of Mordath. You get these characters right here kind of talking some background smack, and Mordath gets uh, resurrected. Uh, here we go, uh, and we finally get introduced to the main character of the story, and this is, uh, this is Arwen. She's uh, sort of an archery chick, and the first chapter basically... Uh, introduces her struggling dealing with Mordath's return. Mordath's trolls are basically attacking and raising her her town. Uh, you get some pretty tragic moments in this first chapter, and I'm not going to spoil it because it does kind of help build her character and her motivations for why she goes forward uh, through the rest of the, I guess, comic or the series. She also has a pretty cool dog. Uh, I got a, I got a 
a, a black fur dog as well. So kind of, kind of feeling this, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyhow, she vows revenge on Mordath, uh, due to what happens in that chapter. Uh, she attempts to assassinate him by literally, you know, going, breaking into his freaking, uh, uh, fortress. This is what he looks like now after he's been resurrected. He, he's, uh, now he basically looks like freaking, uh, it's like almost like a Marvel villain <laughs> from like the movies and whatnot. It was like cryptic looking bald dudes, right? <laughs> and uh, she attempts to assassinate him. It doesn't work out. She ends up uh, teaming up with this guy, uh, Gareth. Uh, and they, they're they able to uh, escape out of this, uh, this dungeon. And, uh, well, actually, they almost escape and... Uh, when they're about to die, this character, Nevin, shows up and saves them. Uh, one thing I noticed about this graphic novel is that it uh, it moves kind of fast in the first couple chapters. In that, uh, and it's kind of nice, but at the same time, uh, there I I don't know what the right feeling is, but it it the pacing feels a little bit off in some ways. Uh, for some reason when I'm reading through it. And I'm not sure if it's just uh, the, the nature of the characters being brought in or maybe just the format of a graphic novel feels like the pacing's off. Uh, but, but it's kind of uh, interesting when, when I was reading through this. So uh, they escape, and then uh, Nevin brings them to a different location. And uh, she basically tells them, you know, why she did what she did. Uh, Arwen... Uh, you know, kind of shows off a little more of her character. She's very distrustful of everybody. And she, you know, goes to explain, you know, why Mordath, you know, needs to be, or why she, she, uh, well, here's the, she goes to, uh, to explain what they need to do to stop Mordath, but she doesn't really explain why in particular she saved these characters or, or why she knows all this stuff about Mordath. And it's kind of, you know, mysterious, but it's alluded that she's one of these uh, mysterious characters that was there when Mordath was revived, uh, which is sort of interesting. Uh, she kind of makes up uh, for it by giving uh, Arwen uh, this bow. This is Aiden's bow, and it's the bow that uh, Aiden used to uh, defeat Mordath uh, in the in the prelude, or the the I guess the prologue to this uh, to this book, and uh, they she kind of disappears and they got to go fight some trolls, and uh, uh, they they escape and make their way out, and at the end of their their uh, escape, she resolves that okay well. I don't necessarily believe this lady, but I'm going to go take this bow and start this quest to go, uh, you know, to go find the five pieces and uh, call uh, call forth Aiden and uh, and try to uh, try to overthrow Mordath. Right. Uh, and it it's uh, what I will say is the art is fan freaking tastic. I absolutely love this art by Greg Land. It's really, really nice. Very, very uh, beautiful art. He makes uh, Arwen, Gareth, uh, Nevin look very good. Uh, he makes Mordath look very menacing. And uh, nothing bad to say about the art. What I will say is the writing by uh, Ron Mars and the, I guess, the plot structure, I guess it just feels uh, just a little on the basic side uh, for me. And it, it's still good, and it's definitely, if you have an itch for just fantasy in a graphic novel, uh, I, I think this is a really good choice for you. Uh, if you really want, like, a fantasy comic, this is a really good one. I just, uh, I'm not really, uh, I don't think I'm as hyped about this book as as, uh, as uh, Razor Fist was in his review. Uh, it, I, I don't think it's bad, I just wasn't, when I was got done with it, I was kind of like, eh, it's okay. You know, I think I'll pick up another, uh, the next issue just to see if my mind changes with the next one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, man, uh, you know, art, you know, writing, eh. Anyhow, uh, that's it. Uh, let me know what you think about, uh, this review or this book. 
uh, maybe I'm missing something when I'm going through this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Uh, if you got any comments on this book or any of the creators, uh, Ron Mars, Greg Land, etc., or Cross Gen Comics, uh, leave them down below. And uh, I will see you next time.